Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We may just be in time to see the sun come up. Yes, it really is that early. So I'm sat here in front of the laptop due to obviously people bashing down my front door asking me where the hell are the vlogs. So today it is the 20th of August as you may be able to see by the date in the corner there which it just won't seem to focus on for some strange reason and well I'm up so I thought I put together a couple of vlogs to bring you all up to speed so following this clip uh, we'll start a series of videos which I'll release over the next few days so bear in mind the footage that you're seeing here forthwith after this clip if you like is actually almost now a month old and over the next week we'll try to bring you up to speed to where we actually are I've been extremely busy though because we have opened the kitchen at the brew shed and our sous chef has just had a baby congratulations Matt so that means uh, I've had to cover while he's been off looking after the wee bairn and it's uh, and it's arrival into the world in these strange times so yeah, I've been really too busy to do any video in really. I've captured bits of footage here and there which you'll see will interject into the uh, videos as we get closer to uh, today's timeline if you like. But I haven't really had the time to sit and edit a vlog as I've been finishing at 9, 10 o'clock at night after already doing a full day in the brewery as well. But I tell you what, I've learned how to grill a lot of meat and hell I've grilled a lot of meat. Anyway, let's talk about handling meat and let's talk about beer. So, you might find these next few episodes of the vlog a little bit disjointed, but I'm sure it will all make sense in the end. Cheers, guys. Enjoy. Morning, folks. Welcome along to the vlog. It's definitely been a couple of days since we finished off the last one and lots of things have happened. Yeah, we've got beer out of tanks. We're gearing up to start canning. We're gonna do another thousand cans, this time of proof of concept out of FV5 there. And we're also reopening the kitchen. Yeah, so we should be able to take advantage of Dishy Rishi's meal deal. And then in the post today has arrived a date stamper. Oh look at that, that's been broken, look. Unless it naturally moves around it, I think that's fine. So this arrived in the post, all the way from Shenzhen, China. And this is a heated, a hot stamp date coder. So this mounts onto the label machine, somehow, I don't know how. And it stamps the dates as the labels come by. So we're going to have to figure that out. I don't know how it works. It'll be a steep learning curve for us all, I think. But I'll have a fiddle around with it, folks, but not on camera, you know? So this, uh, this beer needs labelling. I've got to go upstairs and print some labels off for it. And then it needs to be put into the conditioning rooms because even though it's not red hot, it's still 17 degrees in here today, which is too hot. So what I'll be doing is pulling out the cans from conditioning room four and slamming the cooler back on because at the minute it's been used as a hot room you can see it's up at 18 degrees uh, we'll be chilling that down to 10 cellar temps you know real ale cellar temps and we'll be putting the casks in there uh, what else do I have to do yes I've brought the microscope downstairs and we have it sat here this was an eBay special, a couple of hundred quid, with a camera, 5 megapixel camera. I've had this for 6 to 8 months now, and I've only used it a few times, but the reason I'm going to have to use it now is because we've got some bad news. Yeah, so let's just have a look over here. If we have a look up on the tilt screen, you will notice that we have a beer in the black, 
sat at, oh, well done, light, 10.29 at 21 degrees C. That's because that was a repitch of the yeast that we used in a previous beer. So was FV2 and FV3, but they got a higher cell count than FV1. And I think I may have stressed the yeast a little bit. So what we're going to do is take a sample of the yeast or the beer and just double check that there are no nasties in there. And if it's just a slow fermentation due to an under pitch, then we'll correct that with a bit of slurry, maybe out of tank three, FV3. But FV3 and FV2 were brewed afterwards, after FV1, and they're already finished. So we need to investigate as to what's going on. And we did actually see a Krausen within day one on FV1, but yeah, it's one of those things. We need to investigate it to make sure that we can remedy it. We don't often have a stuck fermentation here, but yes, it can happen. We've also got some more electronics arrive through the post. Well, that probably won't work now. <laughs> this here is a timer, a uh, relay timer. So the idea of this is to wire it up onto the control panels for the fermenters and hook it up to one of these solenoid valves, which were not really very good for beer, but will be fine for CO2. So the plan is to hook it up to CO2 and have that on the top of the tank. And then every 15 minutes, just let a five second squirt of CO2 go into the tank. Maybe that's too much, every six hours. And that way we can t keep the tanks topped off with CO2, even when we're cold crashing. See, the problem has been when we cold crash those tanks, the CO2 in the headspace shrinks because it's being cooled as well. And that inevitably draws in a little bit of CO2 from outside the ta uh, oxygen from outside the tank to replace the lost volume. And of course, some of the CO2 gets drawn into the liquid as well, thus depleting the CO2 in the headspace, which is why during lockdown we lost a tank of proof of concept, which I sealed up and cooled down to about five degrees, hoping that it would weather the storm. And unfortunately, we went to put it into mini kegs and it had oxidized. So it was that cooling phase and not having the ability to top off the CO2. So that's what that's for. And then here we have a little LCD screen, which I may in the future be hooking up via this little I2C module, which comes with it. Well, I had to order that separate actually, uh, to allow us to have a readout of the fill level sensor settings as we fill the cans. Uh, it's already been coded on GitHub as a pull request, but I don't have the code downloaded yet and I'm not quite sure. I've, I'm not 100% sure how to wire this up yet, uh, but we're working on it. That'll come in a future video, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm gonna get a yeast sample before we do anything else and have a look at this, and then we're gonna unpack that can labeler. So we've got a relatively healthy cell count, if you like. This is on the microscope here. And we've just been having a look around at exactly what's going on in, in this batch. And, uh, well, if we do zoom in a couple of times and then just focus in a touch, I think what we're going to find is that this beer, uh, because it's had a considerable lag phase, we do have a little bit of an issue with a uh, slightly higher micro population than perhaps we'd like to see. Uh, now, we never really get rid of all the bugs in a beer, but there's a perfect example, look. That little fella there buzzing around. Well, we don't want him in the beer. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, a couple of little chaps like that can spoil the broth, as they say. Uh, but, yeah, there's not too much going on in there. But there's too much. 
going on in there in terms of microbe stability. So I think this batch of beer may be a tipper, folks. First one we've had uh, out of 100 guiles at the brewery. So it's not a bad hit rate, really, is it, if you think about it? But, yeah, I'm not happy about this. So a lot of what you're seeing on the screen here is uh, protein and trube. So this is all trub around here. That little fella there is a bacteria. Uh, these are yeast cells. This yeast cell here is budding. You can see the bud coming off the side of it. That one's budding as well. So they are, uh, that one's just finishing budding or it's just stuck together. So yeah, they are reproducing and there is quite a lot of yeast, but there's also quite a lot of bacteria. So there's one. That fella there. There you go, that little green boy. Don't want them in the beer. So I think we're just going to have to uh, scratch this one down as uh, the unfortunate failure um, of one in a hundred. That uh, It's not a bad score, I guess. I'm disappointed, though, as you can probably tell. And uh, just for you to have a look what we've been doing the Lucky Lou on. This here is one of those Chinese hemocytometers, which is perfectly fine. And that is hooked up to the microscope. There we go, there's a shot inside. Always much better to have a look through the eyepiece than it is on the camera. Uh, but yeah, it's a swift microscope. It's about 200 quid off eBay. I don't think there's any more branding on it, to be honest. Uh, is that a model number, maybe? If anybody wants to buy one. Don't think it is. I'm afraid I can't help you folks. I don't have a model number. Uh, but yeah, eBay, 200 odd quid, 5 megapixel camera on the top. Anyway, let's go back to uh, to the unit and have a look at some more. Uh, have a look at this heat stamper thing a little bit more. <laughs> 